Linda Love. I am uh, an associate at St. Paul AME Church in Valdosta, and I recently moved back here in May, the end of May 29 of this year. Um, so I received a letter in the mail about a possible change in the polling place for the residents out in Clyetteville and about this meeting this afternoon. And um, I live pretty close to the place where we just voted. Um, it's right down almost near, just past the paper mill down there. And um, I live about a mile up from that on Madison Highway coming back towards um, Valdosta. So I went today and to look at the alternate places um, that were listed. And um, I just wanted to say that it's just my opinion that the Rainwater Center would be more convenient. I kind of got lost, and maybe because I'm not familiar with that Lake Park area way back up in the wooded area there. Uh, I am familiar with Lake Park Road because I'm on there all the time, uh, shopping and what have you. Um, but I just wanted to say that. So that's why I'm here today. Okay. All right. That's, uh, we appreciate your uh, information. I'm going to move this up on the agenda. If so, I need to make a comment before we go any further on it. Okay. The uh, thanks to Senator Ellis Black who interceded with the paper mill union. Uh, we get to keep that polling place. He also stalked Mr. Jerome Tucker while he was out walking in the morning and persuaded him to become the poll manager down there. So you have a poll manager oh, okay. from Clyteville and two assistants, and he's been recruiting in here, so he's picked up a few more people. So okay. it looks like we'll be able to A, keep the polling place, and B, staff it with people from Clyteville. Yes. Oh, well, thank you. That's <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, see, I, hear one, I see here one more that did not attend the meeting where we had this done last Thursday, so. I, I guess I was just going to say, can y'all uh, please keep the Clyteville. I'm Darla Peters. Uh, my name is Darla Peters, and I'm from the Clyteville area. But I was just going to say, can y'all please keep the Clyteville paper mill open because it's closest to where I live. And we're more out to, out to vote there. But thank you. That's great news to hear. Well, they had told us we couldn't use it anymore. But thanks to Senator Ellis Black, he persuaded them to let us continue using that. Oh, that's great. Wow, here. My name is Lee Arnold, and I'm also from the Clyville area. And I'm here for the same reason these two ladies are, is to voice our opinion about the voting precinct. And I was going to say, well, if we can't have it there, why can't we have that the volunteer fire department? Or the old volunteer fire department, which is sitting there empty. I mean, we're paying for that, us taxpayers, you know, and it'd be more convenient for the people in that area to vote there rather than, you know, especially elderly people to have to transport to the conference center or Lake Park. And that's, that was my opinion and, and what they wanted to bring that to you. I mean, the, the, the old meat, the old uh, fire department over there is just sitting there vacant. I mean, unless they got it packed with stuff and their store stuff in there, but. We right. used to vote there. I have voted there. Well, yeah, they are storing years, things there. Years ago, everything was there, and then now, but now I guess they're storing. But then I heard someone say that the uh, the new fire department that that was an issue because of people parking in front of the fire trucks while have you if they're there to vote. Well, that should be an issue because you got barricades and yellow tape, you know, uh, to keep that from happening. The biggest issue there is it's not big enough to yeah. put. We're required by law to put. X number of machines per 250 you. voters, and we couldn't do that in there. Okay. And the heating and cooling issue, um, it has to be heated and cooled for the equipment and the voters as an ADA requirement and a normal voter requirement. And it was virtually impossible to do that if you keep the door open. If you don't keep the door open, they have to go in through the fire department and disrupt their operations. Okay. It was just not a good situation. It was not ideal. It's doable, but not ideal. Right. But now we got our old polling place. Well, that's so. great. I mean, that's good news for me. And, and all the people that are down there are going to be grateful, I'm sure. You know. well, we, we appreciate y'all's concern. Yeah. And, uh, the issue sounds like it, it has been we resolved. Know. And we're back to square one where we were to start with. And thank you for, for your concerns, all of you. And we will do the best we can to keep what we've got down there now. And, uh, and not let Mr. Tucker escape. Well, well, what about, you know, like there's a couple of churches down there. Were they willing to be willing to do that? There's a big Methodist church there. They said no. They said no. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. it, has, it has to meet certain regulations from the state. And then uh, and also with, with the church, it has to be up to the members of the right. church and their, right. their parishioners. And uh, 
but right now everything's everything's in place and I see the girl wants to speak and uh, but thank y'all again for being here and, and blessing us here. So, Jerome. Again, my name is Jerome Tucker. I live on Jumping Gully Road and uh, we attempted to contact as many folks we know as uh, I walk every morning, Ellis Black, South Ellis Black walk, and Dolan Bland lives on Jumping Gully Road, and we all kind of congregated there at the intersection of Tucker Road and Jumping Gully. <laughs> uh, and last, and we set up a meeting last Thursday uh, there at Union Hall, and we all received these cards, and we started thinking we needed to see if we could address what was going on, what was happening, because it was pretty convenient to us that live in Clydeville to vote there. Uh, and we held this meeting and we uh, probably had 35, 40 people. We just, people we just called off, off the cuff. Uh, we didn't do a spread blowout trying to get everybody there, uh, but we met and discussed and we had the union rep there and um, they were satisfied with what had transpired and they had uh, <clears throat> said as far as they're concerned we could use the union hall as long as we wanted to um, and so that's kind of what happened, uh, and we are appreciative of a lot of things got done pretty quickly. Uh, this letter came out, and then we go to Christmas holidays, and uh, then it all got resolved. And polling place to set is the same place for the time being, uh, and they assured us. I said the union had their representative there last Thursday and said it'd be fine for us to continue to hold the uh, uh, vote, vote uh, precinct, have the precinct there. And so that's where we are. That's where we are. And, and to make uh, sure everybody knows that, we'll be sending out precinct cards to everybody in Clyteville again, reminding them that their polling place is still, and they'll have a notation on it, still the Paper Mill Union Hall, and we'll run an ad in the paper. And there's a sign already in front of the polling place, so that should come up. I get two questions. When these polling places, particularly these private concerns, is there some liability that they're concerned about sometimes? Is there any liability? There's usually liability they're concerned about, and anybody can sue for any reason. That doesn't mean they're going to win. Right. But the county assumes the liability on election day when we use that polling place. Well, I, want, I want to thank Ms. Scott for her efforts in making sure that everybody in Clydeville was notified of, of the change. It wasn't anything that was done by anyone here or any place else to take anything away from Clydeville. Uh, as soon as we were notified that the uh, whole place couldn't be used, the effort was put forth to try to find a new one and start finding another one. Find out what y'all want. Uh, and then send something out to the voters so they could have some suggestions in it. And, and I think <coughs> her and that this person y'all need to, to thank right there. She, she did a terrific job and hard on that stayed on top of it. And, and your uh, union hall down there, the representative of the union, tried to be a community partner and do their part of it too, which is a win for everybody. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and we thank them for that. The majority of their employees down there vote probably in Clydeville anyway. A lot of them live right there. Uh, exactly. A lot of them in that area. Exactly. Right. Right. Well, they said it was a misunderstanding, so we'll go with that. Right. <laughs> Works for me. It all worked out. Right. That's what I told you. Mm -hmm. Let's let it go. It's been handled. We've we, we, we got our precinct still in the same place. And an outstanding all those manager. Stuff that went on, and, and we all had an opportunity. If you, if you miss a meeting, we all had an opportunity. Some of us have not seen each other in 30 or 40 years. <laughs> so. Was there food involved? No, actually, it was oh, just quiet. It was just quiet. <laughs> That's good. All right, any, uh, as far as the citizens be heard, anything else? Is that uh, everybody, uh, that part is, is through the citizens be heard? I, I'd just like to say that's great that the Fayetteville Paper Mill Union's 
gate being kept open. <laughs> yes, sir. I'd, I'd simply like to thank the citizens who turned down and the board for its responsiveness to the concerns of the citizens of Clark. There's, there's, there's the lady right there. <laughs> All right, well, she had two, we... uh, excuse me. And she had two representatives from the uh, board here at the meeting also answer questions. And so we got a lot accomplished in a short time in the last Thursday. We don't have a whole lot of time to do it in, so we had to hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, before we move down to the next, uh, the next item, and I know several of y'all are here just for the Clyteville review and, and what's mm -hmm. going on with that. So we put it to rest. If y'all want to leave, be fine for y'all to leave. If you want to stay for the whole meeting, that's up to y'all. Just give you a chance to, to get up and leave if y'all want to. It won't take much longer, I promise. There's not much to do. I've never been to one, so I'll stay here. Right. Good. Glad, glad Have to have a cookie you here. while you're at it. Right. <laughs> right. I'm just giving you the opportunity. Thank you. So, uh, Appreciate right. it. We'll move down the agenda, move down to the supervisor's report. Okay, the expenditures are nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, however, you have the fiscal year 2020 proposed budget. I sent it to you all in the email for review. Um, got no changes back, so you'll need to adopt that by vote so I can turn that in tonight, today's deadline, for part of it. So if you have no changes, if you have changes, let me know and I can make those adjustments. The only thing different in there, which you probably have saw already, is we asked for an increase from $7.25 an hour for our part-time staff. Because the uh, a lot of other part-time people in the county make more money than that, and this is a high responsibility, highly technical area that they're working in. We also ask for a poll worker pay raise to bring them up to 7.25 an hour minimum wage for the hours that they work, and we ask but category two, not category. Those are priority ones. Priority two was uh, attendance at the national elections conference for the board chair and myself. So the mayor may not approve. That's the only real changes in the budget because I track it from year to year, so it makes it pretty simple. We have three elections in that budget year, which is going to be the November municipal election, which is reimbursable to the county, uh, the presidential preference primary in 2020, and the regular general primary in 2020. So that's the three elections on that budget. All that was included in that budget. Right. <coughs> so we need a motion to approve. Yeah, what I read and could understand was like it was as good as we could do. I'd like to make a motion to do it. Uh, I'll second. All in favor of having that sent in as a recommendation to the county. Uh, Aye. Have you been given a date for the presidential conference for me? Um, I believe so. I'd have to check the board and see. We're working on three elections for. February and March right now, so I'm not positive about that. We're about brain damage, too. We don't that. <laughs> you start off where you are, that's not what it is. <laughs> Next thing is the calendar. I sent the calendar to you. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Jackie came into that, we looked at it, and still doesn't. We do have overlapping elections. February 12th, we have House District 176, which requires the three weeks of early voting before and the February 12th election out there. The runoff for this, since we have four candidates, has already been set. It's going to be March 12th. We have three weeks of early voting before that. March 19th, a week later, is the countywide election. So we've got three elections in a short amount of time. Countywide election for the East Lost um, and for Valdosta School Board District, too. So what's going to be happening is February 12th for the runoff, we're going to have voting in the polling places for House 176. We're going to have early voting in here, 7 to 7, for the March 19 East Boston and Valdosta City Council. So we're going to have literally overlapping elections. I've asked a couple questions from the state to get a legal ruling because on election day, um, you can't let people vote provisionally in here. But if they're coming in here to vote for one election, they shouldn't have to go to the polling place to vote for the other election as well. So I wanted clarification there, and I wanted a ruling from the state, state to say you can or you can't before we tell them, no, I'm sorry, I can't let you vote on the election here. you got to go to your polling place. You can vote here for this election, but you got to go to Naylor to vote for the other election. Okay, so, well, right. And we, so they're looking at that. They haven't encountered that. They'll get a ruling back to me very soon. 
Okay. So this cal this calendar I gave you is accurate. It's not messed up. So when you see we're voting for two elections at once, early voting and things like that, that's exactly what's going on. Don't think the presidential election is bad. <laughs> <laughs> two elections are rough. How, how that came up with the schedule? I, I that was court ordered. That wasn't the neither the February 12th nor the March 12th <coughs> standard election day. So. 176. And right now we have four candidates, none of which are from Laos. And it closes today. As a matter of fact, it just closed now. So I don't know what the final hour was. I haven't looked at the last hour see if we have any Laos candidates. Two from where and two from Linear so far. No, come and I can make it. We'll do the best we can. And that's all I have. Y'all got anything? We can stretch this out a little bit. Well, nothing that we need to uh, <laughs> address on that. Is this for anything in general? The uh, February 12th is for House District 176. That's basically the northeastern part of the county, precincts one through four. It won't involve Clyetteville. The March 12th is the runoff. If we have four candidates, the probability of a runoff is about 99%. Um, that will also involve precincts one through four. The March 19th, a week later, uh, is going to involve all the precincts in Lowndes County because it's a countywide East Blosh. The uh, county school system and the city school system are both holding their educational splosh to renewal at the same time. It's the one cent that's already there that they want to renew. And the Valdosta City School Board, District 2, to fill the unexpired term. So those will be going on simultaneously. We're trying to maneuver with the state to get it as easy as we possibly can for everybody because it's a bit schizophrenic at the moment. Well, let's, let's hope they can work that out with us and we can, uh, I mean, that's almost like spending the day to vote. <laughs> you'll be here when all over. That's what I said, at least let them vote provisional or something in here, you know, right. I mean. Yeah, let's, let's hope they can work that out with us on that. Is this where we come to ask them to fix the roads? <laughs> No. Out of our hands there. <laughs> if you want to follow Dr. Marks, is there a commission meeting today? There is, and I'll be going there. Okay, you can follow this lady, and she'll take you exactly where you need to be to make that comment. That's well, not the road to the polling place. Right? <laughs> oh. Okay. All right. Thank no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just every few miles you get a big, there's a big hole in the road somewhere. Yeah. Oh, that going on? Yeah. And they, they're, they're still there. All right, and you say that's as far as you're. That's all I have. That's it. Okay. Let me move down to uh, unfinished business. I can't, I can't think of anything. Right now, that we have to uh, address it's unfinished. I don't think. Okay. Move down to new business. Go to the new businesses. Clyteville's back in order. Yay! Thumbs up for that. And, uh, the next item is a discussion for Clyteville. Holy place. We, I think we jumped the gun and started that first. And, uh, nothing wrong with that. Do they adjourn? Any, we want to adjourn now. You got anything else? You know uh, Mr. Evans? I think I've done everything I know to do for the town, Bill. Okay. I'm scratching anything from you, everything. No, we're yeah. good. You just man it, you man it the equipment. That's right. That's it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I moved to be adjourned. I'll select that. Come on. <laughs> All right. Our next meeting will be February the 12th. On election day. Y'all will be voting for you too.